Hello? DJ AJ? Hey, buddy, let me talk to Addison. She's supposed to be on the show right now. I'm not sure she's available. May I tell her who's calling? Your father. DJ, DJ, it's Dad. Tell him I'm not here right now. She's not here right now. I just heard her. Put her on. Hey, Dad, what's up? What's up? We're on live TV right now, and I'm without an announcer and a DJ. Where are you? Is that little show tonight? Sorry, Dad. I'm just super busy. With what? Between fan mail and people trying to interview me. I'm swamped. I'm just trying to find time for me. You know what I mean? How are the grapes? A little more ripe than I prefer, but I'm managing. So, any chance you can come do the show? We've got a great guest tonight. Tell you what, I'm going to help you out. Very big of you. I'll just run things from up here. But have your agent call my agent tomorrow. Well, my agent, that happens to be your wife, says it's time to get a new contract. I bet. I'll be sure to talk with her. Let's go. Live from Studio A and from my bedroom, somewhere inside the great state of Kansas, it's Leadership Late Night, brought to you by the Kansas Leadership Center. As always, DJ AJ here rocking the beats and bringing the entertainment value. On tonight's show, a discussion about leadership with a guest halfway around the world. Joining my dad from Israel, Vice President of Masa Leadership Center, Sarah Mali. Now, your host and my dad, DJ Wetter. Good evening, everyone, and welcome to episode four of Leadership Late Night. I'm DJ Wetter. Glad to be back with you. We've got an action-packed show for you tonight. We'll bring you a brand new segment in just a few moments, and I am so excited for our guest. Imagine running an organization that brings 7,000 participants from around the world to your country. This country happens to be Israel, and how you would handle that if a global pandemic hit. That's what we'll talk to the Vice President of Masa Leadership Center, Sarah Mali, about tonight. It's a fascinating conversation. And as always, this show relies on your involvement. Use the chat window to get some comments and questions in at any time, and we'll wrap up the show by having a conversation. And then we'll take that conversation to Zoom for the after party. If you haven't joined us on that yet, it's been a great community growing there. We'd love to have you for the first time tonight. We'll post how to join that after party in the chat window. Let me also do this. Let me pass along Easter and Passover blessings on one of the holiest weeks of the year for the Jewish people and the Christian people. And let me acknowledge that certainly these holy times feel very different for all of us, whether you're religious or secular. I mean, think about it. Many of us this weekend would normally gather around large tables with large meals and take stock, slow down, and honor tradition. In many ways, we've been doing that for the last month or maybe longer, depending on where you're living, and we've been doing it in much smaller ways. I think what it highlights is our ability as humans to adapt. It's been one of the themes of this show, that we are about adaptation. And when we adapt, when we move forward with a purpose, we often lose something. We have to give something up. It's baked into adaptation, and I find that fascinating. So as we perhaps sit around a smaller table this weekend, I hope that we take stock of what's different and think about what that change might mean to us. Me, for example, I'm giving thanks for this idea that social distancing gives me the opportunity to tell my crazy side of the family, we can't have you over this year. And I know I have some family watching out there. I'm not talking about you guys. I'm talking about the other side of the family. All right, let's get this show underway. DJ AJ, you hit the beats, I'll hit the desk. All right, and welcome back to the desk, everybody. Boy, the uh, help around leadership late nights getting rough. I I'm kind of on my own here, but DJ AJ clearly uh, has the attitude of a star, and uh, she was a blast to work with today, I got to tell you. 
Again, episode four of Leadership Late Night, and we're going to go global this evening. We're going to take the conversation all the way over to Israel, uh, one of the partners for the Kansas Leadership Center in Israel, the Masai Leadership Center. So I'm excited about that conversation. I want to keep it super local, though, for a moment and get the conversation started. And I want you to think just right around uh, your inner circle, who you're missing, who you miss being able to connect with face to face. I know we can go Zoom. I know we can do these virtual calls. But uh, we're three, four weeks into this thing. There's some glimmers of hope. It feels like two steps forward, one step back at times. But there's some glimmers of hope. But but I'm missing some face-to-face -face time with my parents. I'm missing some face-to-face uh, -face time with my sisters. I'm missing having one-on-one -on -one conversations, maybe at a local watering hole. And in that vein, we've got a new segment tonight. So as I talk to my daughter and my son today, they're missing friends too. They miss school uh, obviously for the educational factors, right? They miss the education piece, but but they also really, really miss out on uh, just being able to have that social aspect, being able to connect with friends. So in that vein, DJ AJ and I came up with a new segment for you tonight. Take a look. DJ AJ and I are in the car for a brand new segment. The reality is this social distancing thing is really hard. We don't get to see our friends and family like we usually do. We only get to see them inside this little screen. And it's been especially hard on the kiddos, right, DJ AJ? Yep. How has it felt not to see any of your friends from school for more than a month? Super sad. Super sad. So we think with the right supplies, we can have a little bit of fun with one of Addie's friends and one of my friends and have an informative interview. So we're doing a new segment we're calling Social ding dong distancing. <laughs> Addison, what supplies will we need for this adventure? Hand sanitizer, disinfectant wipes. Close enough. <laughs> and a super long fake microphone. And a super long fake microphone. All right, you ready? Let's do it. We're here at the Duringer house. Elise is Addison's good friend, and Andy is my good friend. Use the disinfectant wipe. Oh, <laughs> what's up? How you doing? You've been socially ding-dong distanced. Okay, what's, what, what do we do? We want to ask you some questions. So you're here with DJ AJ. Say hi. Hey. And you know me, good friend. We're wondering if Elise and you are available for a quick interview. Andy's a teacher, and Elise is an awesome softball player on Addie's team and a good friend. What's up, Elise? <laughs> we miss you. What do you miss the most about school? My teacher and my friends. Each week we get to do a Zoom meeting, but they're really short and they're boring. <laughs> And this is what happens when third graders get together. They giggle. Do you have any more questions? What have you been doing for fun? Uh, hitting softballs at the park and watching a ton of movies. Andy, what has it been like being a teacher for you during this time? Teaching is all about working with kids. And, you know, when you have to be talking through a screen, if, if you get any contact at all, because it's on the kids to reach out, um, it's been been really challenging. Thanks for being our first guest on social ding dong distancing. Well, that was big fun today. Thank you to the Derringer family who had very little idea we were stopping by and uh, let us take them by surprise. Uh, much like Parker's words of wisdom that we heard on Tuesday, I think that might have to be a return segment. So, uh, Within reason, we may hit the neighborhood into the car to uh, do some interviews. DJ AJ's already got some ideas of who she'd like to interview next. All right, I want to dip into the leadership portion of the evening. And we've kept the conversation for the most part so far inside the state of Kansas, talking with some organizations, some amazing partners. Um, KLC, when you do leadership work that is about mobilizing people and that is connected to these bigger ideas around the world that, that you can make progress on daunting challenges, you meet some amazing people. You, you start to make some friends. And um, the reality is here, I got a chance to connect to uh, tonight's guest back in December, basically through the opportunity to, to go abroad 
and uh, share what KLC does, how KLC facilitates with an organization in Israel that teaches leadership as activity. So tonight's guest is Sarah Molly. She's the vice president of the Masa Leadership Center. But before we get to the interview, I do want to give you a little backstory. Um, as I mentioned, this leadership work that's founded in the idea that anyone can lead anywhere, anytime, it, it connects KLC to some amazing partners near and far. And so, again, we, we could go a million different directions, but I thought it was interesting this week to interview Sarah because she's coming off trying to figure out how to manage participants within her uh, country that travel from around the world to live there for, for a certain amount of time. And you'll hear more about the organization during the interview. But the reality is they're really a large scale tourism group that also teaches leadership as an activity. And it is fascinating to hear how they're handling this pandemic and uh, how Sarah's seeing leadership right now. So I uh, hope you'll see how leadership is rooted in mobilizing others around daunting challenges. And it's something that frankly is alive all over the world. Take a look. Sarah, welcome officially to the Leadership Library, all the way from uh, inside Jerusalem, right? Are you in Jerusalem proper? In Jerusalem proper. All right. I am. Well, it's, it's so exciting to have you here. We've been friends for a while, and uh, I'm so thankful for getting to connect to your amazing organization. And we'll get to that in a moment, but I wonder if you'd start with what life is like uh, for you right now and for your family. Well, thanks, DJ, for having me um, on your show. Uh, what is happening right now? So I am in a room in my apartment in, in South Jerusalem and outside, you, I don't even think you can hear, there's a clang of pots and pans and water being splashed everywhere. We're cleaning for Passover, which means we have to get rid of any unleavened bread. Unleavened is like a really biblical term, but it basically means bread, crumbs, flour, anything. So we're practicing uh, Orthodox Jews and we are getting rid of everything. Um, and that's come after three weeks of being in total isolation. Sarah is not only a caretaker for her family of four, she's also responsible for nearly 11,000 participants that travel from around the world to work in Israel each year. I am on the senior executive team of Masa Israel Journey. Masa means journey. And uh, we bring around 11,000 participants young Jews to Israel between the ages of 18 to 30 to explore their Jewish identity, their connection to the Jewish people, and their connection to the land of Israel. Participants stay in Israel between four and 12 months, working jobs within the education sector, the government, and beyond. We had 7,000 participants about two months ago. We now have 3,500 participants, cut by half. All of them are in isolation, staying uh, it, maybe in their apartments um, or in their small groupings and they're not allowed out and they are a select group that they seem to be a very unique group because they have chosen to stay in Israel and not go home. I can't think of another tourist community hmm. that, that would have done that at such scale. I'm curious if there is and if anyone that's going to listen to this knows, I'd, I'd love to know. Um, and so we've had to spend a lot of time trying to work out how we support them because they don't have the natural holding environments that we do. We don't, they don't have their families, they don't have their community support. And Massage, the umbrella organization really um, kind of in charge of them also has a kind of duty of care. So we've been trying to work out how we support them with online learning. Uh, DJ, you were part of our leadership summit last week for 45 of those participants who were in, wanted to engage in thinking about leadership. But um, yeah, it's complicated, really complicated. Um, amazing people, kind of I feel it's an act of leadership to want to stay and want to contribute here. Um, it's not, not an act of leadership to leave, but there's something about, I want to continue my year notwithstanding the circumstances. Managing participants in a time of crisis is nothing new for the organization. And we've had, we've had uh, things like this in the past because we're, we're, we're in the Middle East and we have, we have military conflict, not infrequently. Um, we've had periods of time where we've had our students under siege, like they've not been able to go out because of bombs. So now we have another lethal threat. And unfortunately, this country is pretty equipped to deal with things like that. As part of their experience with Masa Israel journey, participants usually have the chance to connect to one of several week long or weekend leadership programs put on by Sarah and the Masa Leadership Center. 
I think there's, uh, there's, we have to identify the loss. Um, we are a people, person, kind of human material leadership learning lab. Yeah. That's what we do. It's exploratory. It's emotional. Um, uh, there's a kind of visceral engagement. And we are learning that we can do it. And we are learning that it's different. And there's loss in that. And there's beauty in that and courage and fortitude but there's also loss um so you know it's not clear what how we're going to emerge from this and we're going to have to work out what pro, you know what programmatic stuff we can keep what's uh, what's precious to us and what what we can and now we're learning what we can experiment with right now and like most organizations Massa is experimenting with virtual connection in december of 2019 i traveled to israel with klc colleague kevin baumhoff to teach 150 participants about leadership as an activity that might mobilize others. I was supposed to be back in Israel this week. Instead, I joined Sarah and her team to teach a virtual two-day summit online. It's like they came for a purpose and they're having to adjust it. So like all of us, it's almost like systemically, this is what the leadership center is feeling. We're feeling like, how are we relevant to this group of people? And that our group of people are asking the same question. So it's a search, it's a search for meaning, it's a recognition of loss, and it's, a exper it's experimental. Yeah. So, you know, we did this thing the first day on our, on our summit, which was about leadership. And we got them back the next day and they said, we said, what have you done? Have you done anything? And three of them said, we only had time for three people and three people just jumped and said, you know, we, we've spoken to our parents because we realized we have to take responsibility for our parents right now. And that's the small scale act of leadership that can be done by anybody anywhere. And that's what we did today. And another woman said, I started the pet project at experiment with the idea that I can connect my Arab students to other North American Jews across the ocean. And that could be an experiment of meeting of hearts and minds. It's been kind of just amazing how these kind of ideas have bought, brought people together around the world, and yet in the midst of it, it's messy. Like, one of you, you know, I, I tried very hard to learn a little bit of Hebrew while I was there, and one of my favorite words was balagan, right? This idea, and I still say it like I'm Italian. So, the but this idea that there's chaos and mess, and, and it's a kind of pasta, right? Balagan. I know. I'll, one day I'll, I'll have it down, but. But I, I actually, that's the most beautiful word is, is I've heard it explained to me for, for what we're trying to do, that stuff is messy. And when you're in the mess, mm -hmm. it also means you can be a part of the progress. And so I, mm -hmm. I just, mm -hmm. we're in many ways asking people to sit in a mess right now and, and, and figure it out, figure out what a small act of leadership looks like. And I actually think it's forcing people to, to really start small, which may be the right thing all along. We often try to start big and, and then back our way into small. So I don't know. I, I think it is messy. I don't know what your reaction to that would be. You know what I thought about when you said about Balagan? <laughs> I thought, how, what associative feelings we have towards the word mess and towards the word Balagan. Mm. And to, the words were, I grew up in the United Kingdom. I'm British. I moved to Israel when I was 24. So mess, in, if you're a good British girl, you, you, know, you, you don't like mess. You are mess of a, of us. Your, your parents want you to clean things up so they're spick and span, right? Yeah. That's, right? Mess isn't a good thing. We avoid it, right? Probably, and this is what I'm going to get to at our peril, but, but, but Balagan, if you think of the emotional associations to Balagan, it's funny that you thought of Italian, but it, it, Balagan is like, what a mess, but in a kind of playful, celebratory, totally crazy thing. Mm -hmm. And I'm wondering if, I mean, it's a new thought, I'm just saying it for the first time, if we could readjust our approach to mess, what would it look like to shift the way we think and the way what we attribute emotionally to mess? Because some messes, you know, I've just cleaned up my house and my house, I had to make it totally a balagan in order for me to find things that I cherish and get rid of things that I want to discard. I had to do that. It's my Passover cleaning. Yeah. So, and, but then, but I had to have the balagan. I had to go through the balagan. So maybe there's something about that that's what we like our emotional work that we need to do right now. The realities inside the state of Israel are also reminding Sarah that progress often resembles managing self. I'm also trying to hold back my anger. There's um, a group in this community in, our, in Israel of uh, different groups, different subsections. I'm actually not going to mention them because I don't think it does a good does justice to the to the social glue here sure. uh, that have chosen not to. Uh, um, keep the social distancing guidelines. So 
I'm really doing work on myself about how I can like what to do with the blame and the the anger that I'm kind of feeling towards that group of people and that's like taking a step back looking at myself thinking about well what are their what are their stakes what are their commitments what are their loyalties what are their losses like I have to I have to get out of my own my own like emotional state and uh, frames of reference and that is really tough because the temptation to blame and to scapegoat another community is so and I'm I'm do this work this is what I teach but it's so close to me that uh, you know I'm, I'm trying to I'm trying to do that and she's still finding plenty that makes her smile my friends um a good glass of wine at the end of the day I mean I just feel we all deserve it just you know you know this word l'chaim when in Hebrew you say to life just a l'chaim at the end of the day you know just yes chilling um what else makes me laugh oh we had to clean out the fridge today right for passover the fridge was totally empty didn't have the drawers in so my 16 year old daughter got in the fridge she got <laughs> in the fridge every i got in the fridge you know my daughter she got yes. in the fridge my son came in he's 13 came into the room and i was like listen uh you're high i need to get some give me some water i need to and she, she like, like, you know, Ellen DeGeneres, you know, when the, someone jumps out of the box, she booed him. And I, I'm telling you, it was cathartic. I was just, it was so funny. He just like jumped out of his skin. This human person came out of our fridge. It was just the best. So that made me laugh today. Laughter is one way we cope in tough times. And finding ways to hold to history can also help. For centuries before the state of Israel existed, a common blessing at the end of the Passover Seder meal was next year in Jerusalem. My colleague Yuri from Massah reminded me of this blessing when we taught together virtually instead of in person last week. I've thought about that phrase a lot since then, and it turns out it has a deeper meaning for us all. Jerusalem also, there's a, the word wholeness is in, in the word Jerusalem. So I, I, even if geographically it's not next year in Jerusalem, it's next, and very soon we can be whole. Mm. We can have wholeness and togetherness, and I feel that deeply from you. And very grateful for Masa Leadership Center's relationship to the Kansas Leadership Center, and uh, particularly for you and your role with us. So, all good things. Happy Easter. <laughs> Hang in there. Thank you. We will, and I'll talk to you soon. Welcome back to the desk, and I am so thankful for Sarah Molly joining us tonight. As I mentioned, Sarah and uh, many of her colleagues have started the Passover that will last over the next week, and so Passover blessings to Sarah, her family, and uh, just blessings to everybody out there as uh, we enter a weekend that for some is holy, for some is another weekend, and for all of us continues to be part of a time that just feels different uh, amidst COVID-19. Well, I want to get the conversation started. I'm going to look over at the other screen here. I want to get some of your chats uh, brought in here. So be sure to send in some themes you saw, what, what's sitting with you about this. Um, a little bit of housekeeping before we get to those, give you a chance to send some things in. One, just remember, join us on the after party. We've been getting a nice group of about eight to 10 people joining us, having a short conversation about what they heard during the show. And it's been fun to just connect with people uh, really all across the United States and uh Maybe from around the world tonight, we'll see what we get. Although we're uh, we're eight hours behind our uh, colleagues uh, from the state of Israel tonight, so that uh, may look a little bit different. Um, that said, I also want to remind you that if you like stories like what you just heard, there is amazing work going on at klcjournal.com um, right now. A story highlighted about how a Lenexa neighborhood has become a refuge after COVID-19 hits close to home in an elementary school uh, right down the road from this neighborhood. And there are just a ton of great stories on there. Chris Green, managing editor, and the entire journal staff, I just wanna to continue to give it up to them and highlight that part of leadership and civic engagement, part of our mission at the Kansas Leadership Center is to be connecting stories of progress to you. And that is really a theme that we hope to continue to play out throughout the night. All right, let's get the chat room going. And I wanna start with a comment from Seth Bate, our colleague over at KLC, managing self around judging those who choose not to comply with social distancing is real for me. 
On my good days, I am curious and compassionate about that. On my not so good days, I am irate and certain they are wrong. Just amazed by that story by Sarah, it really struck me. I know it was a longer story and a longer segment, but uh, she mentions, and she didn't name the group by name, a segment within uh, the ultra-religious population that is making some decisions not to socially distance. Uh, we have those same stories playing out in the United States of America and playing out in other parts around the world. And the curiosity there from Seth, and I think Sarah brought it up as well, to say that it's not about just being sure others are wrong. If leadership is about engaging others, we might have to consider what they value, what they're about, um, what loyalties they're bringing to the situation, if we ever hope to make any progress on, on maybe getting them to move forward with what seems like a healthy act. So it's not about agreeing with any other group. Remember, in leadership, it's about if I care so much about my collective purpose, and right now purpose is pretty clear, keep communities healthy. If I care so much about that, I might have to engage and energize people who don't think like, look, who don't think like me, excuse me. And, and that is a hard lesson to learn. It's not about agreement. It's about understanding so we might energize. Uh, Kevin Baumhoff weighs in. Kevin, my colleague, we... Certainly we missed our time in Israel this time around. Celebrating mess is part of progress with loss and opportunity. Jeff Mendel, all the way out in San Francisco, dealing with loss is baked into the culture, almost a competency that doesn't need to be taught. Yeah, uh, my good friend Thane Chastain, uh, we, we have this behavior you know, that says speak the loss, and he reminds us quite often, it might be more about letting loss speak. Loss will speak. People will name what they stand to lose. And again, when we adapt, Loss comes with that. But the reality is, if we give space for loss to speak, we don't have to answer it. We don't have to apologize for it. Uh, we don't have to try to fix it. We just need to leave room for it. We're actually more likely to engage others, just letting them have a chance to name the losses they're feeling. And this is certainly a time where we are feeling a whole lot around loss. Uh, let me scroll back up and get a couple more in here. Ian Brown, thanks for joining us again. Ian, experimentation seems to be the KLC theme of the day. Julia Favors McBride, always great to have you. Relevance, meaning, seeing those themes kind of stand out tonight. Um, and so as we begin to wrap up this show, I really hope that you walk away tonight thinking about this idea that we are all a part of the mess, or the Hebrew word belagam, right? And not a mess in the sense that we're, we're wrong for being a part of it, or it's somebody else's problem, but that we might actually have to go through the mess, and Sarah suggested maybe make things messier, like I cleaned out my garage last week and I actually had to destroy the garage even worse than it was already destroyed so that I might know where everything is and put it back together. That's the experience that uh, Sarah's going through in her household this Passover as they get the house ready for that. So that I love this concept that we might have to go through the mess to truly understand what it means to make progress. We are a part of the mess and if we are part of the mess, it means we are also a part of the progress. Well, thank you so much for joining me for episode four of Leadership Late Night. It's been fun. I hope to see a bunch of you over in the Zoom room. Uh, Julian Montez has been helping us on tech. Thank you as always, Julian. He's posted that Zoom room code. We'll see you over there in just a few short minutes. But on the way out, I hope you know, as always, we've got our moments of hope to share with you. And as always, good night, DJ AJ. Good night, Dad. It is dinner time here at Lena Acres in Spring Hill, Kansas. Here is one of our guys saying he would like a little more food. <laughs>